Raj College in Bartholomew University and then uh, from IIT Kharagpur. And then he did his uh, PhD at uh, Shahai Institute of Nuclear Physics and then uh, went to TIFR for his uh, first postdoc and then to Kavli Institute uh, in China, where uh, many of our colleagues, some of them have already given talks here, where they are. So, uh, so he was a postdoc at Kabul Institute during the pandemic. So partly in Kabul Institute and then later uh, working from India. And then uh, at the end of that postdoc, he went to IISC and uh, was a postdoc with uh, Bani Bhutto Kukubadar for a few months. And then he uh, joined uh, his current institute. Joined, joined the so, uh, Chandrachur uh, did his uh, master's project at IIT Kharagpur with uh, Professor Shayan Kaur, and he worked with uh, uh, string theory, classical analogs of string theory, etc. So he was interested in quantum gravity, but then when he went to Shah Institute, he uh, cleverly realized that uh, working in quantum gravity is not good as a career path. So he uh, did something else, which is uh, looking at frame dragging effect, uh, which is a very uh, important effect of general relativity. But interestingly, it has uh, observational predictions as opposed to uh, quantum gravity. Um, maybe you need to have um, so, so, so he worked on that, and he will uh, talk about some uh, at the end, he has promised you talk about some observational predictions of uh, the theoretical uh, work that he does. Uh, so, without further delay, uh, let's start, uh, hear from Chandrashu. Uh, thank you, Ritavanda, for your nice introduction. And I thought from to thank Ritavanda and Kujapanadi for giving me the opportunity to present my work before you. So today I will be talking about uh, this. Can you see a singularity, the most extreme object in the universe? So before going into my talk, uh, I just want to show you that uh, my research is broadly related to general relativity with application to astrophysics. That is uh, called uh, relativistic astrophysics. So I work on these various topics, which are actually applications of general relativity, uh, like. Uh, A height name sub editor? Height. Height. Okay, let's, let's move on. Mm -hmm. So uh, I work on the various topics like uh, theoretical aspects and corresponding observational implications of uh, black holes and naked singularity. These terms may be very new to you. I will come to that. And um, I am mainly interested in strong gravity regimes, uh, in the strong, strong gravity assembling effect, uh, spin precision, uh, gravitational analog of parity location, and black hole shadow, uh, gravitational wave. And primordial and transmuted black holes, analog models of gravity and gravitomagnetic monopole theory, and high energy astrophysical phenomena like uh, relativistic accretion, tilted accretion with body interaction effect, uh, magnetic pendulum process, QPOs. So, uh, my central theme of my work is actually the black hole spin. I am highly interested in this uh, black hole spin. So, my theoretical findings complement the results of spin from this astrophysical observational astrophysics. So today I will be talking about one of those topics, namely uh, this uh, uh, black hole. This some of this uh, heading is here. So that is schematic diagram, black hole and naked singularity. So when the pool of a very massive star actually spent, uh, it collapses due to its own gravitational pull and becomes a very small region of arbitrarily high matter density uh, that is called singularity. So classically, singularity is, is just a point. 
just a point, but I'll show it here in the week. So that is actually a point. So that is singularity. I am talking about classical picture. So, so if this singularity is hidden within this uh, event, it is called event horizon. If it is hidden within the event horizon, that is uh, one way membrane that allows entry, but no exit are permitted. Mm -hmm. That is called event horizon. So if this singularity is hidden inside this event horizon, that is called black hole. But there are some impression is that um, sometimes this uh, um, uh, this event horizon uh, may not form. In that case, in principle, we can see this uh, singularity that is called, uh, that is why it is called uh, naked singularity. So that, this is the basic difference between the black hole and naked singularity. And sometimes in my talk, the singularity will appear. So that's why I should, I think that I should first explain what is black hole and naked singularity. So NS means naked singularity and BH means black hole. Now, <clears throat> why I am suddenly interested in this? So why is general relativity implies that uh, singularity is formed, but there is no proof that forming of the horizon, I mean event horizon. So, there is an assumption made by Penrose in 1969 that event horizon always forms and it hides the singularity. So this is called cosmic sensitive conjecture. So this is conjecture because it has not been proved yet. So uh, Penrose made this conjecture in 1969, but there is a long going debate of naked singularity's existence. Uh, so there are uh, many people, they claim that naked singularity does not exist in the universe. But there are some groups, they, may, they, they actually claim that naked singularity should exist. But as this is still a conjecture, uh, there is a long going debate of naked singularity existence. And I do not have any intention to go into this uh, debate because, um, yeah, there are many, in, the, this debate is mainly uh, yeah, comes from theoretical point of view. So, my, so what I think that mm. we, we, may, uh, we may end this debate if if we find it observationally, I mean, if uh, yeah, whether we can find any astrophysical signature of naked singularity's existence in our universe, or how this observational detection is possible if naked singularity exists. So how can you distinguish a naked singularity from a black hole? So my intention is not going into the debate. Instead, I want to find whether we are getting any astrophysical signature from our moon astrophysical observation. So our prescription is based on this uh, precision of a test gyroscope. That test, test gyroscope means a test spinning top, just a test spinning particle. Simply we can say test spinning top or test spinning particle. And uh, due to this, um, so this, uh, that is actually, uh, I will come into that, this spin precision uh, and orbital plane precision of a test particle arise due to the frame dragging effect. I will come into that. What is frame dragging effect? So due to the frame dragging effect, this um, so our precision is based on basically the um, frame dragging effect, and all rotating space time um, can well all rotating space time actually show this frame dragging effect. And rotate, as I mentioned that I am interested in the spin of this black hole and in this universe, actually everything is rotating. I mean, there, there should be a, a very small spin. No, nothing in this universe is exactly non-rotating. So uh, everything is rotating a rotating line. So this rotating space times, I mean, are described by this car geometry. So I will, I will describe that what is frame taking effect and what is this car geometry. So based on this rim dragging effect, I will show that uh, how we can distinguish between the uh, black hole and naked singularity. And there is another, another important conjecture in um, general relativity that is called uh, no hair conjecture. It is sometimes called no hair theorem, but it is actually a conjecture because because it, it has not been proved yet. So this 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 mention that astrophysical black holes are described by mass and spin. And in general, this no hair condition says that black holes are described by mass, spin, and charge. But as the charge black hole cannot exist, that's why this astrophysical black holes are described by only mass and spin. So, uh, so, uh, so mass and spin, 
So card here, if we consider a space time with mass and spin, that is described by card geometry or card space time. So astrophysical black hole candidates are thought always thought to be the card black hole predicted by general relativity, but the actual nature of these objects has still to be verified. And uh, this cosmic frequency conjecture and nuclear conjecture are a foundation of the existing theory of black holes and their modern astrophysical application. So uh, why why we always consider the black hole? This uh, main reason is that this is this uh, cosmic sensitivity conjecture and no hair conjecture. Now I am coming into this. Uh, card. So, the number keeps of the no hair conjecture. Mm -hmm. What does that say? That say that any black hole should be described by mass, p and charge, charge okay. electric charge. But uh, you see that as to be uh, in, the, in, 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 in this universe, a uh, charge level cannot exist right. because if it exists, it, it will be neutralized yes. in a moment. So that's why astrophysical black hole is described by only mass and speed. Correct. Yeah. So then the question is that how is that? How do you connect the known air conjecture mm -hmm. with the astrophysical black holes? Mm -hmm. what, what is the connection here? No, astrophysical black holes, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, Actually, I do not connect it. The astrophysical black holes, people, people consider this astrophysical black holes are, are described by only card geometry. Correct. Because this no hair conjecture. Because no hair conjecture. Oh, says, you are saying that uh, if no hair conjecture has to be true, yeah. then these astrophysical black holes must be described by mass and spin and hence a card geometry. Yeah. Is that the. Yeah. Okay. 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 Bye. So uh, I should, I am going to describe this car space time. So uh, this is uh, so yeah sorry for the sorry for this expression but uh, this is uh, not very complicated. So car space time is uh, written like that. So m is basically mass of the space time, and a is the uh, a is called car parameter or spin parameter that is that indicates this angular momentum per unit. Man. So, J is the angular momentum of this space time. Space time means we can consider that. Yeah. So, we know that the black holes form due to the supernova explosion. Mm -hmm. So, what is the uh, probable cause of forming the Nakatsumi singularity? I am coming into that. Actually, recently, not recently, today, uh, a paper actually uh, uploaded in the archive from me. I, I mean, there I actually described how this. Uh, Car naked singularity can be formed. That is mainly from this um, transmuted black hole. I think you have heard a talk of Ranjan Lahai a few days ago. Yes. So if if uh, so if if some dark matter particles actually accumulate in the center of this um, any cosmic object, so then uh, after some time it will form a uh, endoparasitic black hole in, at the center, and this endoparasitic black hole will accrete matter from its host. And whole uh, cos whole that cosmic object or host will be transmuted to a black hole. Now, if you consider a neutron star, then it has some spin. Mm -hmm. But we can, due to the angular momentum conservation, we can show that uh, neutron star cannot form a negative singularity. But if I consider a white dwarf, when, as, as the radius of the white dwarf is very large, due to the conservation of angular momentum, the white dwarf actually transmuted to a negative singularity. It depends on it, of course, depends on its speed. If the spin is very high, recently this uh, this the fastest white dwarf uh, spin is around 25 seconds. I am talking about a second, so 25 seconds. So this type of uh, white dwarf can transmute it to a car naked singularity, not a car black because it had a non zero spin and due to this conservation of angular momentum, it is possible. This is just an example, but there are many. So, what is the mass range of this MS? Hmm. Mass range, you know, that is uh, uh, similar to the black holes. Yeah. yeah, this is this is you you see the, we don't know what is the actual nature. People some people claim that negative does negative does not exist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, there is no such any uh, mass difference between the black hole and negative similarity. This is just a tippling. Okay, mm -hmm. if for example for it black hole, it does not form negative singularity. So I, I am giving an example from this car space time. So this is the this is car space time. So as I mentioned, there are two parameters, mass and angular momentum from no hair conjecture. Now uh, actually horizon can be calculated by setting delta equal to zero. 
So if I um, so this uh, radius of the horizon is m into one plus over one minus theta square. So it's going to be y m. So you see that radius of the horizon is this. Mm -hmm. Now you see that if this uh, value of the square is between zero to one, then r plus minus is real. Mm -hmm. That means horizon exists. Mm -hmm. But if square is greater than one, then it becomes imaginary. Mm -hmm. So horizon does not exist. So, in case of the singularities which have an event horizon, like uh, we can say that the event horizon is kind of a definite boundary for a battery. But in case of naked singularities, is there any kind of boundary that defines them? Actually, in principle, as I mentioned, there is no such boundary. But uh, some people think that uh, things that cosmic censorship conjecture still it is true. So, they consider like Gimon and Horab. I don't know whether you know that um, those names, they are very. Famous, I mean, famous physicists, Gimon and Hora, but they, they actually consider that uh, this singular, this singularity, that what I am saying, negative singularity, they consider this, this singularity is hidden in a boundary, some boundary, they don't know what is that boundary, but there are some boundary that they should hidden this singularity. So they, instead of negative singularity, they called it as card super spinner. That is called super spinner. If they contain this boundary, any boundary that we actually don't know what is that boundary, what is the property, anything, but this boundary can be up to the plank length so that this singularity is hidden. Okay, so they called it a cut super spinner. So the A, a parameter is remain unchanged, but if this um, singularity, if this is hidden any such boundary, then it is called cut super spinner. If it does not, uh, if if we do not consider any such boundary, we can tell it as negative singularity. That is the main difference. Uh, so just singularity is hidden. If we consider singularity is hidden, then it will be part of this A parameter, it is mass called angular momentum or unit mass. It's a dimensional quantity. Oh, okay. No, we are we actually in general we we always consider geometry unit that is g equal to c equal to one. So everything is length unit. So mass is the length unit. Mass is the length unit. That's why it's a dimensionless. You have made it dimensionless. we made it dimensionless because here a is the length. Yeah, the length dimension. A is the length dimension. J is length square dimension. Okay, and everything is length dimension. Uh, in general, area. so uh, this uh, location show now. Um, as I mentioned, that if it's greater than one, that will be a part of the super spinner. That's why I mentioned super spinner. And this uh, location of the singularity, if we, uh, actually, the singularity, uh, I should, uh, yeah, singularity will be that by d square divided. So for rho square equal to zero, d square divided. So that is. Well, r equal to 0 and theta equal to pi by 2 for because rho square equal to r square plus a square plus square theta. So when r equal to 0 and theta equal to pi by 2, then uh, rho will be 0. So d square will diverge. In that case, it is called singularity. So this singularity is not a point singularity because it, it is rotating about its own axis. So this is actually if we calculate it, I can show you that is not a point singularity, that is a ring singularity. So singularity. It looks like that. So this is a car black hole. So singularity is like this, the ring singularity. And this is uh, this, and this is called Argo region. I am not going into that because it will take too much time. So just look into this. This is singularity and this is event horizon, this uh, red one, red boundary, and the singularity is hidden within this uh, event horizon. Now, this is the schematic diagram of the car black hole. Now, we actually uh, showed that if we consider the uh, naked singularity, suppose A is, as I mentioned, if A star is greater than 1, that is a naked singularity. So if, if I consider A star equal to 1.01, .01, there is no such event horizon. Mm, so this is actually the, it is called Argo region. Uh, do you familiar with Argo region? You don't know. Two of them are. Uh, most of them are. So actually, then I have to explain. Uh, so, Argo region is this, um, when this, this is called, this term will be zero at the particular radius, that is called Argo region, I mean Argo radius, so if we consider this is equal to zero, we obtain 
radius of this arbitration is m into 1 plus minus into what this. So plus minus means plus means outer arbitration, minus means inner arbitration. This is uh, this Argo region actually a property of this uh, any rotating space time. Argo, is, Argo means that we can extract this energy, maybe I will say Latin order, I am not very sure about that, but uh, Argo region means from that region we can extract this energy. Okay, so we can extract this energy of this uh, rotating space time that actually give you this energy to launch a jet. Okay. Yeah, Pandora's process. Ah, so that is related. So this actually comes from this Argo region. So Argo region plays a very important role. Right. And for the Schwarzschild Brecko, the Argo, Argo sphere is a similar as the event horizon. Yes. So in Schwarzschild Black hole, there is uh, no A because that is non rotating. For uh, there is R is um, actually Same. Same. plus R plus is 2, R minus is 0. So there is no Argo region. So we can extract this energy only from the rotating space time due to the spin of the black hole. So spin of the black hole is very important quantity. That's my point. So there are various applications of this uh, spin. So anyway, you can see from here that for this cos square theta term, although if A star is greater than one, then horizon does not exist, but Argo region can exist due depending on this value of theta. So that so Argo region is actually in this range for minus cos inverse 1 by 1 plus epsilon. And epsilon means this change of this value of the spin parameter. I mean, if it is greater than 1, if I consider A equal to 1.01, then epsilon is 0 0.01. So you can see that uh, for this naked singularity, the Argo region should exist. So that's why this is a naked singularity. So this is inner Argo region. Uh, this uh, yellow one and blue is this outer Argo region. So this is basically the Argo region. So and this is ring singularity. So this is this azimuthal cross section of a negative car negative singularity. So in real intensity, it is like a torus. So this you are plotting like uh, what are the x and y axis? Actually, um, I mean this is a parametric plot in this R theta coordinate. That's our theta. Yeah. And yes. this, this is outer Argo region, and this is inner Argo region, and this is inner Argo region. So, this is basically the uh, basic difference between the you know, car black hole looks like this, and car negativity looks like a torus. So, now this is this uh, brief introduction about car space time. Now, I am coming into this frame dragging effect. So if there is a space time rotates about its own axis in nearby space time is twisted. So this is, we consider here, this is earth. Okay. So if earth rotates about its own axis in its nearby space time, this green one actually be space time. We are considering this is space time. So you can see that due to the, due to the rotation of the earth which is about its own axis in nearby space time, twisted. Okay. Nearby space time is twisted. So now if I just keep a test gyroscope here, then its spin will start to precede about its own axis. Mm -hmm. So this is very interesting thing. Something is here, it rotates about its own axis. Now you just keep a test gyroscope here. When, yeah, when it, yeah, when it will start to precede, it will yeah, start to rotate about its own axis, this test gyroscope will start to precede. So there is no connection between them, but there is a space time. They are given in a space time. So, this effect of rotation actually uh, affect this test gyros. So, that is called frame dragging effect because it's like that frame is dragged. Frame is dragged due to the rotation of the space time. So, uh, so I'm going to win that. So, gyroscope pieces anyway, right? So, I mean, so this precession will be in addition to that, or are you saying that it precesses because of gravity? No, there are two types of precession actually. Uh, I don't know. There is geodetic precision. Right. Geodetic precision. This precision arises due to the curvature of the space time, only the mass of the space time. So, geodetic precision arises in this first stage space time also. But this frame dragging effect, this is called, this is discovered by Lenz and Thiering in 1980. This actually appears only in rotating space time. That's okay. Yeah. I'm just asking that if you take a gyros. Mm -hmm. And let it spin. Mm -hmm. Then its spin axis precesses mm -hmm. in presence of gravity. Yes. 
So now, if you have some, if you have a uh, highly card space time, mm -hmm. so then the precision. There will be additional, additional yeah, additional. So, if I understand the idea is probably this that suppose um, there is gravity, but then uh, it's not a rotating geometry, but if there is a rotating geometry, I, I, this is many years back, I took the GR class and uh, so I think there is a instantaneous space frame which adds an additional precision to the yeah. gyroscope. This is what my understanding yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. always an instantaneous yeah, space yeah. So, so this is the artist concept of the frame dragging effect. It is also called gravity magnetic effect uh, and geodetic precision that appears due to the uh, curvature of the space time, mass of the space time. That is called gravity electric effect because mass is considered as gravito yeah. gravito electric charge. So if 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 we consider there is a mass and uh, mass and this uh, geodetic precision, so geodetic precision appears due to the the curvature of the space time. So and and this uh, if uh, if we if we just take an analogy between gravity and electromagnetism, so if if there is a charge, then we can get electric field. If this charge moves, we get magnetic field. Now, if there is the mass of the space time, then we can get geodetic effect, geodetic precision. If this mass starts to rotate about the known axis, then we get this length lengthening effect. This is why it is called gravito magnetic effect. This is just an analogy. <laughs> so, lengthening effect or frame dragging effect is called gravitomagnetic effect. Yeah. So, this is just an introduction, and I just want to show you that this lengthening, uh, lengthening. <laughs> It is art camera from the day. Any day, you will So, uh, length. So, I just want to mention you that this is length sitting effect is just not a theoretical work. Actually, this length sitting effect due to art was verified by gravity flow pre base mission in 2011. So, this is observed. This is an observed effect. Okay, and it actually exactly matches with this uh, yeah. GR prediction. Okay, so this geodetic precision rate is around 6, 6, 0, 0. 0.8 plus minus 18.3 milliard second per year, and length sitting effect 37.2 plus minus 7.2 milliard second per year that is reported, and this is actually predicted by general relativity. So um, this is actually measured. That's because of the, uh, you know, you have the, you have the arc and the uh, space time that is. Uh, yeah. Around yeah, around the earth. So actually, uh, this is the gravity probe B uh, satellite here. Yeah. Shanta yeah. was planned, I think, in the 1960s. Yeah. So 2004, it actually launched. And uh, in this, uh, sorry. Uh, so inside this gravity probe B satellite, there are test gyroscopes. And it is this frame dragging effect and geodetic creation effect measure from this. Uh, from this uh, precision of the test Anyway, so this is just uh, this is just not a theoretical work of the um, uh, I mean prediction. It is actually measured um, for this rotation of the arch. So rotation of the arch is very small. That's why uh, very small effect. Uh, so this is very small effect. Milliard second And lengthening effect is too small. But this is very interesting to me. Anyway, so we are now in a year that is validity of uh, GR in strong gravity regime, which is, uh, you know, that most interesting and exciting regime because recently this um, uh, shadow of this uh, black hole uh, by even Virgin telescope and this detection of this gravitational wave for this. So this is actually basically in future, we think that uh, people will be able to probe the strong gravity regime by this. Uh, to think that is event origin telescope and this detection of gravitational wave. So, LT effect is one of the prediction of GR by which validity of GR in strong gravity regime can be tested. Okay, so now precision of the, you know that precision of this frame is defined by like this. So, now I we I actually um, 
want to show you that in 19, nine, in 1990, 1918, Lenz and Thing discovered this length effect. And this 1960, this slowly rotating, for slowly rotating compact object, this length thing effect actually calculated by Sheep in 1960. That is, you see, one by R cube. So that is, uh, length thing precision is proportional to. Uh, 1 by r cube and j is you know a a into m yeah. so now if a is 0 there will be no length thing mm -hmm. so you cannot see the length thing away in this watch chain geometry and at theta equal to 0 it reduces to 2 ma by r cube so after uh, many years we actually find this exact length thing precision of a test gyroscope in the car. So what is the theta equal to zero is equal to signify? Theta equal to zero actually signify the eight is gyroscope. Angle between the yeah, this is the rotation axis and the gyroscope axis. No. Uh -huh. No, if suppose if suppose uh, yeah, suppose this black hole is rotated about its own axis, yes. so this is theta equal to zero mm -hmm. and this is equatorial plane is theta equal to pi by two. Mm -hmm. So if we keep this test gyroscope of theta equal to pi by two, then theta is equatorial plane, then it is theta equal to pi by two. If the if the test gyroscope freely falling from the theta equal to zero, then it is called theta equal to zero. So we actually uh, calculated the exact length thing precision rate of a test gyroscope in the car geometry. That is somewhat complicated. Uh, so if we just take this low rotation limit, we can also obtain this uh, sixth result. So this is the exact um, uh, exact expression. So, um, behavior of now, if we just uh, plot this expression as a function of r, omega lt versus r, if we just plot it, you can say, you can see that this for red one is 3 over to 0, you know, 5 by 6, 5 by 4, and this. So, you can see that uh, if we decrease the value of r, we are considering strong gravity region. If we decrease the value of r, this length string vision rate increases. And and <laughs> at the event horizon, it is tremendously high. But this is for A equal to 0.9 M for black holes. For A equal to 0.9 means black hole because it is less than one. But if we consider what is the unit of R? Here everything is geometric unit. Length unit. Everything is length unit. R is length unit. I mean, length unit means here R is 4 M, 3 M like this. M means, M means, it, M comes from the mass of the space time. Suppose if I consider a solar mass black hole, A will be 1.5 kilometer. So 4M means 6 kilometer. Okay. Okay. If the Schwarzschild radius time the Schwarzschild. No, not Schwarzschild. This is called gravitational radius. Yeah, gravitational. Yeah. Two M is Schwarzschild radius. Yes, sir. Yeah. So now if I consider this uh, A greater than one, that is A equal to two M, you can see that in the weak gravity regime it increases. But in the strong gravity regime, it actually get a peak. And that r equal to very close to r equal to zero, it becomes uh, finite. So for this uh, length thing effect becomes finite at uh, very close to the singularity. So this is this. So by this length thing effect in the strong gravity, one can distinguish between a black hole and naked singularity. So consider. Uh, so you, you, you can see from here that. Uh, for theta equal to 0, our exact length of thing precision reduces to uh, 2 mr by a cube. So that is proportional to r and inversely proportional to a cube. Whether for this um, black hole, it is 2 ma by r. Cube. Okay, so it inversely. Um, uh, so what is the difference and how to calculate the length thing for a naked singularity? I, I, as I mentioned, that car space time, there is no bound on it. Car space time is. Correct. Also, so let me understand. So, this is the length thing effect we calculated. Exactly. Car, exactly in the third yeah. geometry. Yeah. And then you are saying that, okay, you know, it's slowly rotating, it could go to the sheep result. Yeah. Theta equal to zero, we understand is the is the is poorly co rotating. I mean, I, understand I mean, it's really falling. Uh, but then we saw that. The, uh, the, the you know the behavior of the length uh, uh, you know effect mm -hmm. as a function of r mm -hmm. is different for the naked singular exactly. 
Now, if you consider that just a uh, 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 thought experiment, if if there is an if we send an astronaut which which actually records the gyroscope precision frequency at two fixed point close to the rotating object, then two possibilities can be seen. One is precision frequency of gyroscope changes by arbitrarily high large amount. That is wide change of the behavior of gyroscope. Then this would be the black hole. And if this precision frequency changes a small amount in a regular wave step manner, then it should be a negative single wave. So uh, this actually, we also obtained some astrophysical application of our result that is gravitomagnetism and pulse turbine precision here are card black. And if we consider a card black hole and some pulse, we know that some pulsar orbits around this supermassive black hole from this um, house, uh, house, we actually explored how spin precision of a pulsar with orbits are supermassive black hole can modify the rate at which pulses are received from Earth. So by this uh, observation of pulse, we can uh, say that whether this supermassive black hole is a black hole or a naked singularity. So this is a different world. I am not going into this. <clears throat> so this is uh, one uh, experiment, I mean, observational indication. Second, second thing is we applied our result in a uh, uh, accretion disk. That is a uh, very common in, in, in the astrophysics. So you know this, uh, as I mentioned that if I keep a tail gyroscope in a rotating space time, uh, it will start to precise. Now, if I consider a test particle orbits around a rotating object, suppose uh, this is, uh, sorry. suppose this is a rotating object and uh, it actually uh, rotates on the known axis. So if any test particle uh, orbits around this object, then it plane actually start to precise. That is football like this. The orbital plane precises due to the rotation of this space time or black. So this actually arises due to the length sensing effect. If for this first scale space time or first scale black hole, we cannot see any orbital plane precision because, uh, as I mentioned, for a equal to zero, there will be no length sensing. We cannot see any orbital plane precision for first stage space time. But for this uh, rotating space time, we can see this orbital plane precision. And um, and you already know, I think, accretion this. So I am not going to do that. So, so if, I if I calculate this uh, orbital plane precision, that is actually done by uh, Kato in 1990. If we calculate the nodal plane precision or orbital plane precision due to the lengthening effect, we obtain this exact precision that is this. And if you see that if a if I put a equal to zero, omega nodal will be zero. So there will be no uh, orbital plane precision for first scale space time. But if a is non-zero, then orbital plane will precise. Now, interesting thing is that nodal plane precision frequency still, if we set this equal to zero, you can see that for, for some value of r, that is this 0.5625 square m, this nodal plane precision frequency vanish, vanish for a, for this particular radius. But you see that for the black hole, yes, term is from zero to one. So for in case of the black hole, it will be r zero will be inside the black hole. We cannot see that whether the nodal plane precision frequency vanishes or not. But if s is greater than one, my axis is up to r, r, r equal to zero. So r zero is outside this mm -hmm. singularity. So r zero is possible for card negative singularity, but not from black. Now, if we just plot it, r versus s star. So I am just plotting this one, r versus s star. 
you can see this is the blue line. So, and I am coming to this in detail. So, this is this black line is called innermost stable circular orbit. It does not appear in the Newtonian gravity. It only appears in the general relativity because this, um, uh, if you consider an ast uh, accretion disk, this accretion disk will continue up to a certain radius. That is innermost stable circular orbit. So, that is we call ISCO. So, uh, if we calculate the ISCO radius with A star, you can see that for A equal to 0, ISCO is 6 m. And if for the maximally rotating black hole, A equal to, for A star equal to 1, that is R ISCO is 1. But if we again increase the value of A star, then ISCO radius decreases. So for R ISCO will be 2m by 3, that is uh, 0.66. 7m for a star equal to this value 1.089. So you can find it in Chandrasekhar's book. So this is the minimum R squeeze possible, and that is only possible in case of the negative singular because a star value is 1.089. So you can see here that this now this blue line is actually this one, where this nodal plane region is going to vanish. So in case of the this is the black hole. 0 to 1. So you can see that this uh, blue line does not arise in case of the black hole, but in case of the negative singularity, blue line arises first. So before reaching the ISCO, this nodal plane friction frequency at a particular orbit will vanish. Although this space time rotates about the known axis. That is not, that cannot be observed in case of the black hole. Now, if we just plot this nodal plane friction frequency versus R, you can see this uh, orange one is for A equal to 0.9 M, that is for black hole. And this is the ISCO radius. So, nodal plane friction frequency increases up to ISCO. But if we consider A equal to 1.1 M, this nodal plane friction frequency increases and achieve a peak and then go to zero. And here is the ISCO. And another, if we consider A equal to uh, 2M, then you can see the nodal plane friction frequency increases, achieve a peak, then go to zero and becomes negative. Negative means orbital plane will precede in a revised, I mean, opposite direction. That cannot be seen in the in case of the black hole. So that is the most uh, the distinguishable effect between the black hole and negative singularity, which arises due to the uh, frame dragging effect. So how can this help to differentiate? How much time do we have? On 10 minutes, right? Yeah, I think 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, so uh, how can this help to differentiate between a black hole and negative singularity? So the precision of orbits, the matter falling into a rotating black hole and negative singularity can be used to distinguish the exotic object. So that is because the orbital plane vision frequency increases as the matter approaches to a rotating black hole, but this frequency can decrease and can become zero for a rotating negative singularity. And this finding could be used to distinguish a negative singularity from a black hole in reality because the precision frequencies could be measured in X-ray wavelength as the inferring matter radiates X-rays. So how is it possible? I can give you an example uh, that actually feels too much with one stone. <laughs> So, uh, so for that, I have to make a digression. I am finishing this portion uh, first. So, this is the first observational indication of this gravitomagnetic monopole and negative singularity. So, why we uh, suddenly motivated in this work? So, there are, I am not going into the details of this method. So, there are three different methods. Uh, to uh, to observe this uh, particular black hole, it is called black hole. I am calling this a black hole for the time being. The ROJ one six five three minus four zero. So three different group using three different methods. They cal they calculated this value of the spin parameter of this one. This object has 0.286, 0.902, 0.99, 0.65 to 0.75. So they also claim that their methods are fully correct, but they uh, so. Uh, they don't know what, what is happening here. For the same, for the same object, three, these three groups yeah. found this. Yes. 
They are widely different. Widely different. That is actually we motivated uh, in this world. Why they are getting and they claim that their uh, observation is correct. Although, um, so what is the resolution? Are these three methods missing an essential ingredient? I am not going into this detail. So we have explored then an exciting possibility that inclusion of an extra parameter with mass and spin may make the result from three methods consistent. So what is this extra parameter? So we actually we actually use different parameters. We thought that they actually make some essential ingredients. So we actually use different parameters. I mean, like um, charge or anything, but we did not uh, find that this new method consistent. But then we find that Linden well and known in 1998, they actually first uh, they actually predicted that uh, this uh, AGN or uh, this black hole should. Uh, contain this gravitomagnetic monopole. So they mentioned that best place to look for this GMM is this. But practical ways to detect GMM in gravitomagnetic monopole in nature, if it exists, but uh, not proposed. So what is gravitomagnetic monopole? That is name is gravitomagnetic monopole, but that is not related to monopole. This is just the analogy to electromagnetism. That I mean, why it is called gravitomagnetic monopole? That is this. So, this is this gravitomagnetic monopole is the analog of Dirac magnetic monopole. Dirac taught us that the existence of magnetic monopoles implies the electric charges quantized. We get the electric charges as the form of quanta. Dirac actually showed that uh, electric charge is quantized because if it is quantized, then there should be magnetic monopole should exist. So, uh, so similarly. Mass, which is called gravity electric charge, as I mentioned, so mass quantization might be possible if gravitomagnetic monopole exists, similar to this, that is done by the Indian scientist Ramaswamy and Sen. So, Bunnor uh, physically interpreted this gravitomagnetic monopole as a linear source of pure angular momentum, that is a massless rotating rod. Can you give an example of a um, angular momentum but there is no mass? Can you give an example? No, you know. That is electrodynamic, I mean electromagnetic field. Electromagnetic field has a non-zero angular momentum, but there is no mass. Okay, so this linear source of pure angular momentum is not actually an electromagnetic field, but that is somehow uh, uh, somehow like this. I mean, but it is possible without mass, angular momentum is possible, like electromagnetic field. So for the time being, just consider that one. So, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, presence of electric charge, we get electric field. If Q is in motion, then we get magnetic field. And the if magnetic monopole present and the presence of magnetic monopole give us magnetic field. I mean, there, if I if there is no electric charge, suppose there is magnetic charge, we can get magnetic field. Okay. So we can get magnetic field in two ways. One is electric charge in motion, another is if there is a magnetic field. So now, if you consider the juridic position, as I mentioned, that appears due to the curvature of the space time. So that is called gravito electric effect. And it appears due to the mass of the space time. Now, if M with non zero spin, then we get length ceiling position. But if there is a gravitomagnetic monopole, if I consider a gravitomagnetic monopole, but there is no mass, then we can still get this gravitomagnetic effect. That's why it is called uh, analogy with this electromagnetism. This uh, called this we call this as gravity monopole as N. So that is equivalent to the magnetic charge with analogy with this electromagnetic. So for the time being, consider this gravity magnetic monopole is um, it is called yeah this gravity magnetic monopole discovered by uh, Newman. Uh, Newman, Antti, and Tamburino. So that's why it is called Taubner space time. So N is called not charge or gravitomagnetic monopole. Now, if the Kart space time contains gravitomagnetic monopole, it is called as Kart Taubner space time. Taubner because so it has now three parameters: M, A, and N. Mass, angular momentum. I mean car parameter. And, uh, uh, yeah. So here. A N M. There is only we include only one extra parameter in. But that's not um, not. I mean, it definitely violates this no hair conjecture. That's what I was just yeah. 
so if we calculate this uh, as i mentioned there's three method three methods actually uh, one is uh, uh, one method actually in in one method uh, there are three methods as i mentioned so in one method we will calculate this uh, radius of this isco and from there they can there are some relation between isco and this uh, car parameter so calculate measuring the isco radius they can calculate the spin of this that and another one is um, that is called uh, this uh, this method uh, that is RPM method that is relativistic precision model method. Relativistic precision means three type of precision we can see. One is length sharing precision that is precision of the orbital plane. Another is precision of the orbit that is called periastan precision frequency and this Kepler frequency. So three, three frequency. From this three frequency, one can, um, and three frequency related to the relativistic precision model method. Okay. So from this, these three precision frequencies, we actually calculated this three precision frequency, I mean, analytically from this, uh, from this cut of space time, and this is a very complicated expression. I did not mention it here. So uh, these three precision frequency are related to the quasi-periodic oscillation frequency. So relativistic precision model method shows <laughs> that the three QPO quasi-periodic oscillation frequency is equivalent to the Kepler frequency, periastan precision frequency that is precision of the orbit, and nodal precision frequency that is precision of the orbital plane. And other two methods actually, uh, from using the other two methods, one can calculate this gravitational redshift. And as I mentioned, this equation. So there are three different methods. Uh, as I have no time, I am not going into the details. So now, uh, if I if I just if I just consider this uh, black hole X-ray binary G R O J one six five five minus four zero eight mentioned. So three QP frequency was simultaneously observed like this. So 440 hertz, 300 hertz, and 17 hertz. So Kepler, as I, I should uh, produce that, new Kepler is on a single term. New variation is new Kepler minus new word, new Kepler minus new theta. And we know the length sharing precision is very low. So this will be lowest value of QPO. This will be highest value of QPO. And this is the medium value of QPO. Uh, so now, so this Kepler frequency is considered as 440 hertz, radius transmission frequency as 300 hertz, and length of frequency is 70 hertz. Sorry, so these the ones that Mot uh, Mota et al. 2014 calculated, those are just assuming card space. Yeah, assuming card space. Type. So now you want to say that suppose if I yeah. have gravity magnetic effect, yeah. I have a card tau and or whatever, T tau, uh, the one that yeah. can and all the Exactly, things. exactly. What will be the changes in yeah. this? Whether it is consistent or not. So, uh, what we found that, uh, what we found that uh, this, um, for this value, I am considering A is the not charge of gravity magnetic monopole, A is the car, car parameter. So, if I just uh, so from that, as it is another mention. If I use this exact expression of this cut out space time, we can obtain this plot between A and A in this. So here you can see that three methods, uh, uh, red, blue, and again actually coincide here. So, and here you can see this, this lines is actually give you this, this uh, left hand side of this line is actually black hole. And this side is naked singularity depending on the value of A and N. Now you can see that these three methods actually give you the consistent result only in this region that I used in here. So you can see this is the naked singularity region, not black hole region. This is black hole region. 
No, because yeah, they actually they will here after that after this oh, point they have to give up imaginary result. So this actually give you this consistent result only in this region. So now we actually uh, so these are this method QP of values. We can take it from this model title, MNRS 2024. This uh, black one is this Kepler frequency, and uh, green one is this Fourier transition frequency, and this um, red one is the uh, lens transition frequency. And this three blue are actually simultaneously observed QT. So this is this. Uh, so we showed that for A star equal to 2.12 and A star equal to 1.86. This actually this um, QPO actually means the, and this this uh, this lines actually give you the theoretical result what we obtain from this cutoff matrix and this is this dot dash is for Kepler frequency dash is for Fourier uh, transition frequency and this one you can see here that uh, why this appears because this uh, lexicon frequency frequency uh, vanishes here and it becomes negative so we cannot uh, see this observational indication of uh, giving this um, precision of the reverse direction but this will look like this this one so if, if we just take it in this in this region it will be you, you, you will see this negative direction this one like this so it actually matches with this aesthetic equal to this, aesthetic equal to this. So our result shows that A is equal to 1 to 2.12 to 2.21 and aesthetic equal to 1.86 to 1.93 are consistent with all the three methods for measuring ester. And the inference of first significant observation and indication of capital magnetic monopole, which was predicted by Linden Bell, Nori Janoj, and um, worked by Ramaswamy Hinshin, they also predicted the same thing. So this is the first observation and indication of gravitomagnetic monopole. This is just an indication. Um, at, 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 at this moment, we can see that even not a direct detection can have, have an exciting impact on fundamental physics and astrophysics because if uh, n exists, then quantization uh, of mass is possible. And as a fitting pull up. Kulas object would be better described by the more general cut out space time instead of cut space time. This makes cut out space time mathematically relevant. And in addition, our result means that this object here, J1653 minus 40, would be a negative singularity. This is also a hint for the time being. We are we are working on this um, thing and let's see whether we can confirm a fate existence uh, in future. Okay. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> okay, questions? So my question is that, uh, as you mentioned earlier, the value of A star is uh, between 0 and 1 for the black hole and greater than 1 for the negative symbol. So is there any uh, value range for A star uh, from which we can distinguish if it is black hole or if it is negative symbol? Yeah, sorry, I, 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 I haven't got the time. So this is the cut of the metric. So this horizon is m into 1 plus 1 plus n star by minus star. So if the value for cut of the black hole, a star should be 0 to 1 plus n square. And if a star is greater than 1 plus n star square, there will be cut of the negative star. As I know the range of a star, I can get the range of n star. <laughs> and uh, that's why in this plot, I showed you this line. If you consider a equal to zero, n star will be one. Mm -hmm. If you increase the value of a star, n star will go to the next time. Yes, you make so uh so that the information flow. So my question is that uh we know that in case of black hole, they do interact with each other. I mean they do collide with each other and we get a very strange ratio with same. Is there any kind of interaction between the negative symbols or the kind of gravitational? Yeah, it's a, yeah, actually we are working on that. I mean, uh, we are trying to find whether we can predict something so that we can see this indication in this gravitational wave form. We are working on that. 
and the frequency range of the vibration of will be the same as that of a black hole. Probably. Uh, actually, actually, presently, if you are interested, presently there is no um, theoretical work on gravitational wave form for a naked singularity. Hmm. I am. I have actually talked with many people. Okay, so there is no such wave form has been predicted by anyone. We are trying. Uh, if I consider a star is greater than one, where how this gravitational wave form will look, look like first analytically, then we can then we can uh, match with this observational okay. method. Okay. Presently, there is no any theoretical. <laughs> but there are some papers by Alexander Bona. No, I don't know or oh. not. There are many papers, but they always consider that. Suppose there is, I also working in this, that if there is a black hole of A1, value A1 car parameter, another value is A2, if they collide with each other, what will be the final spin of yes. these two objects, A1 and A2? Suppose A1 is 0. 0.998, that is called, a, 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 people consider it an uh, yes. maximum rating there, 0. 0.9. If A, A1 is 0.998, A2 is 0.998, what will be the final spin? Because when they collide, there will be an additional angular momentum of this orbital plane. So there will be A1 plus A2 plus L. <laughs> L means this angular momentum of this full system. Okay. So we don't know. This is very interesting. We are we are uh, actually the final stage to that you know the uh, naked singularity or we are trying we are actually trying to show <laughs> I don't know what will what we will obtain. Um but I mean this is a very tough job, not very easy. Other questions, <laughs> comrade. So my question is that like uh, in back of the primary of the can be dark matter can be the primary of the closer dark matter can be people like to look for other slag of another six things that we don't let alone dark matter. Yeah. 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 Yeah